you represent more of a rural area. You have talked a lot about narrowing that achievement gap between larger areas and some of the smaller, more rural areas that you represent. How do you think that closing that achievement gap can happen? Clearly, it's going to be through distance education and, and technology because you were never going to go a place like Channing, Texas and teach German. Not enough students and you can't get the faculty, but those kids can take those courses and they can take physical chemistry and, and, and advanced mathematics and things like that by using the internet, technology and distance learning to have access to well-taught courses and advanced curriculum anywhere in the world. And you also talked about um, how we need to get out of the 19th century classroom when we live in the 21st century. How does that happen? Well, we have eight-year-olds are in the third grade because they're eight years old. It has nothing to do with their intellectual level, level of, of literacy or quantitative ability. And uh, so we're not asking the most of our students at any level those that are gifted and those who are at risk and we have to allocate our sources appropriately. Do you have any examples of school systems that are getting it right? Oh, I'm sure there are and, and we have advanced placement and gifted talented programs and things like that. I just don't think they go far enough down in schools where we let kids advance. A lot of what we do is based upon high school football because if you've got a, a fifth grader who's 6'3", 245, and runs a 4'2", nobody wants him to graduate when he's 14 years old because we're going to use those, those, we're going to lose those athletic gifts. That's not how you educate your population, and true, that's sort of an extreme example, but we need to look at how best to educate those kids and best move them through the system to post-secondary involvement and success. And I'm sure that having the best educated and the best and the brightest teachers are a part of educating those students. So how can Texas retain those best and brightest teachers? Well, we're going to have to identify them and see to it that they have the most modern education. But we're going to have to pay for the best in almost every other endeavor. Known to man, uh, we pay people based on achievement. I guess in some socialistic system. But if you're really good, you get paid competitively. Except... In education, one of the most important functions, and we pay everybody the same, even though we have vastly differing levels uh, of accomplishment and dedication, and it's a silly way to do things. When we're asking for a product at the other end, which is an educated Texan. Last question, who was your favorite teacher growing up? My favorite teacher was Eve Wiles, who had been a legal secretary and could, would have been a brilliant jurist or a judge, but what was available to her was being a legal secretary and a teacher. She was my biology teacher when I was in high school and could have taught any college course I took or gone herself to medical school. She was, she was a, just a brilliant woman and a wonderful teacher and one stern-faced lady if you misbehaved in the 10th grade. We all have those teachers. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you.